You know, I don't think in recent history I've, I've seen a developer actually do something as crazy as concentrate on the end game first before they start finishing off the story inside of an early access release and path of excels 2 developers have just like when i saw this in the stream i was i was kind of like i was taken aback i was thinking to myself like that fucking genius like it's absolutely bloody genius there's there's nothing else that you can say action rpgs for the most part for the die hard fans and the fans that stick around for a long time the end game is where the game is and not the acts that go through a lot of people will just smash through those acts now there will be people like me who will pay through the acts and i do love the story of action rpgs and going through the campaign itself until i get to end game and then i'm solely focused on the end game but there are a lot of players that want to rush through and like it just feels like ggg knows their they know their fan base and it's such a shocking revelation to me to actually think that there are developers still out there that actually focus on who their players are and what their fan base is and that, like i'm just absolutely amazed like I, I when i was sitting through the trailer itself i was sitting there like a little kid on the edge of my seat at christmas waiting to open my christmas presents and as i was as they were like announcing bit after bit after bit during the live stream i was like sitting there shaking with a anticipation like i was losing my mind and i know a lot of you out there actually felt the same like but today we're just going to be talking about this this end game focus and how they've kind of acknowledged the importance of a robust end game in an action rpg and it was only a couple of months ago that they actually decided to switch their focus to ensure path of exile 2 actually delivers on the end game and it's actually a really fucking big deal as they literally just directly addressed the most common criticism of the genre as a bloody whole now i don't know if like a couple of months ago they were like right diablo 4 is this absolute shit dog of a mess so maybe because diablo 4 had basically not an existing end game in the slightest like it did but what was the point of it they must have seen that and thought well oh, this this can really push us ahead in the genre and it's not like they have many competitors in this genre because like the pure puff of exile is still one of the best in the genre anyway regardless of what most people say i mean there'll be people that say diablo 2 and stuff like that but i still think puff of exile is much better than any arpg that's ever come out personally Personally speaking, it had its fallbacks, obviously. That if you like brick a character, you brick a character. That character's gone. Like you, you, you screwed it. They did add some stuff later on where you could like do a little bit of respecking and stuff. But like for the longest time, if if you made a mistake in your build, that was it, man. You were just left with it. And it was yeah. But the, the game as a whole was absolutely on point. They just didn't have some of those quality of life things for the masses of people that wanted to play the game. And there was a lot of people that turned off by a lot of the more intricate, let's say, well, well, I, I would say deep, like it was very deep in its system of leveling and the, the actual skill trees and stuff like that. It was really deep and it, it was a too, it was a bit much for a lot of the less hardcore player base, but it still was so massive, even with those sort of shortcomings for an even wider audience that they've actually started to sit there and think, what can we do without taking away a lot of the hardcore, but adding some quality of life? And they've really taken what they ha what happened in Path of Exile and the shit show that's Diablo 4. They've taken what all of that into account and they've really worked towards it. But what they actually announced within the like, within the live stream itself is that the campaign will only be from X1 to 3. And it's about 25 hours of gameplay if you're playing it for the first time, which is still a hell of a lot of game. It's more than most AAA games chuck out an entire game these days anyway. So like... I there's no complaint there not really without we won't have the full storyline but there's still going to be something for us to actually play during the early access when they add four five and six it was really interesting to know that they were going to be adding like a new game a new game plus a new game a new game plus aspect to it and i was actually like when they said it's kind of like a new game i'm a i'm a massive fan of new game plus i love me some new game plus i love like i, I love going back through with a slightly harder difficulty with all the skills that you got going through i find it a lot of fun like in a lot of jrpgs i play except for metaphor because their new game plus was kind of pointless but i did love the game the first time around i'm not saying it's a bad game before anyone jumps on me for a metaphor being one of the best jrpgs this year but their new game
game plus was terrible but i do love a new game plus free houses best new game plus like i, I just love the new game plus in most jrpgs but they talked about not having four to six acts four to six are not going to be in there for the like the beginning of the early access they did talk about adding twice as much as what's currently there during the early access and afterwards this game's going to go on for a long time it's going to be massive and we're going to have a really great time with it so the the cruel difficulty that they added it's like a it's a temporary second difficulty and just for early access and it allows and it allows us to reach kind of the intended end game level around 65 before we get into the end game so it, as they said in the the live stream it's a new game plus we've increased monster levels and, and it will have new rewards you'll be able to get better gear and stuff like that what those better gear and stuff and how it works we'll have to judge it when we see it but i i'm really okay with what they decided to do here but the future plans they've talked about uh once they do add acts four to six and the cruel difficulty will be removed and players will progress seamlessly from the end of act six to the end game but for me personally i don't know if this is my personal thing but once you've done through acts one to six i'd love to see the cruel difficulty added as a full major staple i'd really love that to, to be like a thing where we run through the campaign again because i do like doing a new game plus as i've said earlier so i'd love to see it so we can run through the campaign again with all of our abilities and just fighting the bosses that are a bit harder and stuff like that i'd love to see something like that that they can add into the end game as so a way to get something like anything it could be uh like we can get a load of orbs from it or like we can just run around and get more you can get spirit gems or we can get char uh, uh, charms i don't know why i was about to say chance charms we can just get some pretty decent gear maybe it is like if you run through the cruel difficulty at the end you get like a class specific unique or something like that that would be quite nuts i think that would be quite interesting to have in the game itself i really like i, I do like the idea of maybe having that as a staple for the game like i, I don't know what do you guys think about that down below I'm not sure if our people will like that, but I personally do like that idea. But when they do add Acts 4 to 6, the they were saying that, as I said earlier, the cruelty difficulty will be removed and the players will progress seamlessly from the end of Act 6 to the end game. Like, that's just going to be standard. It's going to go 1 to 6, then end game. But here's the mad shit. Like, the mad shit that I, I can't really wrap my head around is that they just recently turned over to the end game and thought, you know what, we're going to focus on the end game. We're going to get people in there and doing some stuff and we're going to really test out to see if the end game is any good, which is a massive focus for the early access and i think that's still i think that, i'm gonna repeat myself a hundred times it's a fucking amazing choice but they've already got 50 bosses 400 monster types seven distinct end game systems and they've got lots of stuff i mean they've got the atlas which is the kind of the core of the end game the infinite world map where you basically run around cleansing corruption and like it, it includes random encounters you've got cities hideouts the atlas skill tree to customize your end game experience there's a lot of stuff there you've got the breach you've got the ritual sacrifice monsters or altars to earn tribute you've got a delirium you've got expeditions trial of the succumbus and trial of chaos which is to unlock your ascended classes I'm definitely going Blood Mage. I, I I love the look of the Blood Mage. I'm hoping it's going to be as good as it looks. There are a lot of good Ascendant classes that we've got. We've got two for each of the classes at the moment, and they do look really good. But I definitely think I'm going to be playing Witch, and I'm going to be going the Undead Minion round, just the way I like to play. But they've got, like, the Delirium with the Mirrors, the Transport. Transports into a Nightmare Realm, like, with Escalating Rewards, and it gets harder as you go along. They've got more systems in this early access than I've seen in a game with an end game that the that's got like a, a in years in in years i can't even remember the last one i can't remember it i can't remember the last game maybe you can let me know down below because i can't remember a game that has had this much of an end game and it's not even fucking released yet but as i said earlier they have the plans to double the content during early access and leading up to the release date and it, it's it's such a big thing like it's it's oh i don't think uh, most people understand how big of a thing this is for people who play arpgs and uh, that enjoy the the the, the ma i can't even speak properly that's how much i'm excited for this shit i just really think they've made the best decision that i've seen a developer make in a long time by focusing on the end game itself it just seems like it's just going to be such a bloody good time there's a lot of us that are looking forward to this there's a lot of people looking forward to this and i will be making a hell of a lot of content on this as well i'll be doing like opinion pieces but most of the time i'll be doing guides on stuff like i'm gonna do some videos explaining some of the mechanics as we know them so far before the game releases and then once the game releases i'll get my hands on stuff and i'll start working on it properly during the early access and we'll do a lot of guides there with some proper hands-on experience stuff so make sure to subscribe with something you're interested in and make sure to like the video if you found this interesting if you agree with me if you don't agree with me hit that dislike button as well it's absolutely fantastic engagement is engagement let me know down below what your favorite part 
of this whole experience has been waiting for the development and waiting and what what you thought the best part of the release information was that we got down below like in the live stream i'm really interested to hear what you guys have we'll have some more videos on a lot more aspects that we got coming up so make sure to check that out i want to thank you all guys for watching hope you found this bit interesting fly safe and avoid local chat scams